Hello and welcome. Um, I just wanted to show you a quick introduction to Sampler, which is a partial module pipeline automation I've created, um, mainly intended for the DSC uh, community because we have, I don't know if you're aware, there's quite a few change going on on the DSC community side. So everything that used to be released as part of the DSC resource kit is now being released by the DSC community itself. So that means we have to move something like 50 modules um, to a different release system. We used to do it every six weeks and it used to be done by Microsoft. Uh, someone had to go through the repositories, obviously it was a bit automated, but not completely. So the idea was to remove that human interaction, make each repository individual and released uh, uh, independently and not wait every six weeks to be able to uh, show up in the gallery. So. Without further ado, let's dive in. So the idea of this quick presentation is to show you uh, the goal and the constraints we had um, and with the with the DSC community, and then uh, how this influenced the sampler module, uh, how to get started with it, the module pipeline, and details about what it does and some of the features. Um, the goal was really to move those resource modules to be released individually, but because of all these uh, modules that have been created for quite a while and, and uh, practices have changed and then uh, people and maintainers have evolved and, and improved their skills and changed uh, maybe the, the what what they could what we could call best practices they've really evolved over the time and a best practice is only uh, at a given time and from someone's belief or experience and and so we need to automate the release process when maintaining the same quality, but we need to go through many, many modules, and some of them are looked after um, by many people. So we want something which is consistent, um, but not too new, not too much work as well uh, to be involved in. We don't want to rewrite everything, but a bit of change probably would be good, doing some good. And then we want to apply this consistently and being able to create new modules based on the same template and the same automation. And then um, increasing the reuse of artifacts. So if a module is required across many modules, like a common DSC module, then we need to be able to use that module as an artifact and you pin a version number, and then you can update that version number for a new release if you want to, and if you've tested it. And that, that's sort of the few things that we want to do. And maybe embed it directly into your source code, even if it's a pin version artifact because of the way DSC is packaged, that might be a useful thing to do. We want to enable those kind of scenarios. Ooh, the constraints. Uh, we want to, we have many, many modules. We don't, we have very limited resource. So we want to be able to transition the resources with the minimum effort. Uh, we want the pipeline to be modular and customizable because they might be different. They might be different, um, there might be different ways the modules are done. We want the pipeline itself to be able to be flexible, maybe add extra tasks for certain modules and on different approach as well. So we want to be able to change specifically for a module, but apply the same uh, principle across all the modules. And uh, we need to be able to run it anyway. Currently, everything is run into Abveya. Uh, there's some benefits if we want to do that over Azure DevOps, maybe. So we need to be able to be flexible and not to rely too much on the custom tasks for individual CI system. And the idea as well is if you're a company and you want to apply the same principles within your own environment and you don't have access to these tools, then you need to be able to run it into whatever you have. So uh, we need to have as much uh, code uh, covering the basic principles of the pipeline uh, built in. And we should not assume any particular setup. So if you are taking a module, you don't know that code, uh, the, the, the repository. We don't expect you to have anything specific on your machine besides probably PowerShell 5.1 or, 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 or up. Uh, we don't expect you to have anything, anything else set up. So uh, we needed to have a way to rehydrate your projects to uh, get all the dependencies you need from there. And I'll get into more details. So first of all, uh, let's have a look at some demos and how to uh, work with um, uh, with this module. So let me bring up. So I have a specific. Uh, let's do that here. So I have a specific project here which uh, I've been working on, which is the same template. I'm going to show you first 
how it looks like in um, in this environment. And then uh, later or towards the end, I will show you how you can start from scratch, create a new module, and then from the new module will look very similar because it will have all the same features of this uh, module. So that DSC resource analyzer rules actually comes from the DSC resource.tests uh, module. The DSC resource.tests module actually has, I think, nine sub modules or nested modules, however you want to call it, <coughs> um, which is not very easy to maintain because then it's uh, calling some functions you don't really know where they're coming from. So because you've got nine PSM1 files within one module. So we wanted to separate some of those and especially the DSC resource analyzer rules to just be able to be used independently and updated independently as well. That will really help for the code reviews because we will know that there's uh, if you pin a version, for instance, or if you use a specific version of uh, analyzer rules for the DSC community projects, you will uh, be it will be much easier to see what impacts and what is dependent on that version. So. And um, the first thing when you see in the module, you've got the source files here, which is actually what is contained in your module, and I will get into more details later. But um, what we really want to see at the moment is we want a common entry point. So the entry point is the build.ps1 file. And this is what's running your uh, build automation. And uh, it's got some uh, parameters available. But what we really want to just do for the first time we run it is uh, resolve dependency. So what this is doing is, like you can see, it starts the bootstrap process of your environment and making sure you have all the dependencies required for this specific module. It doesn't install anything into your environment because we want to be independent and not require administrative privilege or uh, not pollute your user environment either. So everything's uh, all the dependencies will be downloaded or verified that they're available into your output folder, which is ignored in Git. And um, it will be it will save all the modules it needs into the required modules. And you can see there's a list here. So the current thing it's doing is making sure all of them are the latest version. And everything is defined into the um, required module PSD1. We just say, these are all the modules we want to be installed on your on your system, available in the system, sorry. So then we can start building this module and validating, for instance, um, the quality of the module and running the tests that we want. So as you can see also, the build PS1 module is running different tasks. It builds different elements and we will get into slightly more details later. But you can see that it automatically runs the thing. So I'm going to stop that one here. So I control C here, clean the output. And then um, I want to show you how you can invoke specific tasks. And um, sorry, so it actually uses invoke, sorry, invoke build, which is a module, and then it automatically provides parameters. But the entry point for this is all build script PS1, which is slightly easier to use. And then, um, because it does a bit more than just running the tasks. So the build PSD1 on the task, uh, there's one which exists, which is no op, which is not doing anything. And the goal is still running the automation. So prepare and bootstrap some of the environment, but don't execute any task. And actually the task is an empty script block. So the um, no op is still doing something, which is loading the configuration of this automation making sure all the tasks are loaded, but not doing anything with it. The benefit of this is it actually, uh, the, the build PS1 as well, whenever it runs, it makes sure your current session, uh, PowerShell session, has the right um, configuration. So for this repository, it makes sure that required module is in your uh, environment variable, the PS module path. So if I double check PS module path, you can see that I've got my DSC resource analyzer roles output required modules. It also has the command windows version modules. But because those are first, whenever import modules or the auto loading modules in PowerShell find uh, is looking for a module, it will first go to the first path. 
So if it finds it in the required modules, it will first start looking there. On next, it will start within the output. So by doing this, uh, let me create actually, let me show you in a new session. So that's a brand new session. Okay. So some of the modules I've got, I have um, um, I have the change log management. Let's take the first one here. So change log management is not installed on my computer. So if I do import module change log management, this is not fun here. Now let me show you when I run the build pierced one task no op. So this is not going to do anything, but it will set up my session. Also looking at other tasks on uh, now, if I repeat the same task, it is able to uh, import the change log management module. So uh, that's for the benefit of going through the build module. Yes. But the different tasks you have, actually, we will get into the task uh, in a bit more details. Um, the idea is what we've seen is thanks to this, we don't need to have any module installed on our system. Uh, automatically, the build automation will rehydrate these projects and download things, and it will be able to using those modules um, in create start the, the the automation of the build system. So that means starting building your module, and we will see what that means. Testing the module, running peer script analyzer, and some other things. So let's jump back to the slides for a second. So we've seen uh, the entry point. Build PSD one or you a PS one sorry how you uh, interact with it, uh, invoking tasks and workflow, and uh, all the no op tasks can work and all the build system sets up the PS module path and then how it rehydrates dependencies when you do a dash resolve dependency. Oh, I forgot to say something actually. So the resolve dependency is needed only the first time you run because it takes some time. So once everything is pulled, unless you change the requirements, you don't need to pull it again. So everything is using different tasks uh, from invoke build. So invoke build is a task runner similar to Sake. Maybe you're more familiar with Sake. Uh, it's a model written by Roman Kuzmin. You can find it on the PowerShell gallery and the source code is on GitHub. It's open source. Uh, the It's got different concepts of what is a build tasks and meta tasks. And the idea is during a build, you run a sequence of tasks. Every task is run only one. You can't run one task multiple times. And you have a meta task. And I don't know if he's got a specific name for this. I call them meta tasks because it's the tasks calling other tasks. So I call that as well workflow. So if you want to have a workflow, a workflow is just a list of different tasks. And I will get into slightly more details uh, later. And um, Sampler's approach is really leveraging invoke build and um, it provides ready to use tasks and um, it puts them together in order, but you can change them within the build YAML files. And I will show you how the build YAML file can be used. And um, the module sampler itself actually exports the task. So if you want to use the same task in a different project or in a different way, you can just export those tasks. And this is what uh, this project is using with the templates. But you can also define your own task if you create a build folder at the uh, base of your of your repository. And then everything within this will be dot sourced before um, the task is actually invoked. So uh, you can very easily customize with your customized task. <coughs> so the different the, the basic workflow, and I said. Uh, a workflow is a list of a list of tasks. It's a sequence of tasks. So the default workflow I've configured is to first do the build and do the test, and then I defined, well, what is the build? The build is you start by cleaning your output environment without cleaning up the modules you need, the required modules. Then you start building your module, which is compiling the different files into um, a valid module, and then you build nested modules if you have any and if you configure any. You create the change log. So you build the artifacts first. And then when you've got the artifacts, you can test it. So you uh, use PESTA, the code coverage, PS script analyzer to make sure the output, the, the module you created, 
um, is actually valid on the, of the quality matching your requirements. And uh, another, um, another sequence you can do is pack. Pack does the same as the build, uh, but on top of that, it creates the new PKG. So um, it just new get pack to some extent. Actually, it's using pack publish module in the local repository, but it packs um, your module to make sure this works. And uh, as an example, that might be uh, helping you validate that the um, uh, everything is in the in the zip files at the end, or uh, that the publish module uh, function will work because you have the right metadata within your um, within your PSD one, your module manifest. Mm, publish. Uh, that's another. That's another sequence, which is first deploy to the PS gallery and then GitHub release. So uh, let's have a quick look at um, the build workflow, the artifact it creates, and uh, let's start with this. So let's get back in there. I want to show you first the configuration of this automation is done with a build YAML file. And it uses different um, different modules, and then different modules are in different parts, and then the configurations for those parts are in this YAML. Uh, module Builder is the, the core functionality that we use to build the actual module. And Module Builder is a project uh, it's in from Poshko, so uh, Joel, uh, Joel Bennett uh, has written it. Um, and what it does, it allows you to take the source files, so the, from the source folder, take the private files, and as we do, which is a one fun single function per file, uh, some in the private, some in the public folder, put them together into one PSM1 file, and this is the output. You have one PSM1 file, everything is together into one file, including um, including separation, which tells you where it's coming from as well, from the source. And then putting everything together, adding a prefix and suffix if you have configured one, and create a valid module for them. And you can also copy folders. So the ENUS folder here has been copied to this output. So that's a very basic principle of module builder. So from this YAML, we can configure the prefix, the suffix, and which directory to copy. By default, it will find um, whatever it needs, or it will have, uh, it will provide whatever it needs to um, for module builder to um, find the manifest and build the, the module. And then this is where we define the build workflow. The default workflow uh, in invoke build is the dot one. So that's the default invoke build workflow, and we define it, as we say, with build and test. Then we define what build means. Build is clean, uh, build uh, module builder, build module with module builder, nested modules create the change log, and test is defined here. And this is the one, all the workflow and task. So if you want to customize, your tasks, you can create another task here. So you can very easily create another task here. And your task can be script block, which is say, uh, get process, let's do this. So if you have a very specific task that you want to have, now you can execute this here, tasks, and it's called do something. So I'm just executing my task, do something. It still reads the file, loads everything, and does the get process. So this is how you can add very quickly a simple task. If you really want to have a more interesting and challenging task, and then obviously you can add it to any of your workflow, and then it will do it. I'm gonna remove that one here. There's another way uh, which I'll show you, which is when you create other root, you can create a new folder, you call it build, and then from there you, cre you create a new file, a PS1 file, which is the tasks, and then you can define your task here, and that can be a bit more, um, like if your task is doing a bit more, and then you has a bit more logic, it's probably a much better way to do it. So let me remove this, yes. And that one, we don't need it. Okay, 
So if I want to run the test, so uh, let me just first build a module. So I run my task build, which is actually a workflow. And as I said, it will take the source and put that together to create my output. So you have enough time to see it. We actually clean this folder and build it again. So if I change my source, I just need to rebuild it every time. And that means from now on, I can use that module on making sure that this module passed my tests. So if I want to run the tests, then I can run my task tasks. If I'm just working on the tests, I don't need to rebuild my module every time, so I can just run the tests. But this is going to run all the tests that are configured. And here is some pester configuration for the test. So it excludes some um, path for the code coverage. And you can also be very specific to what test it runs, including or excluding tags, and then the code coverage threshold that you need to meet. I'm not going to be into too more details, but you can see. So it's uh, what takes time at the moment is probably calculating the code coverage. And then we'll start running all the uh, pester tests. And there's a few. Uh, let me show you. So the, the tests are here. And you've got different sets. You've got the unit tests for all the functions here, the public functions and the private functions. And you can see pester is starting. And you can see it starts running my tests. And luckily, they all pass for now. And you can see some of the tests are script analyzer. So in my QI folder, I've got uh, some generic tests and they have tags as well. One is help quality, which is currently disabled because I know that on this module, uh, we haven't um, properly documented every command. So we're just keeping those tests until we are ready to make the changes. But you can see that this tag is being excluded here. Or I could add another tag below that one. But um, although that one is excluded, we still have the script analyzer one, which is the one you've been seeing here. Each file from the source and the source private and public folder, each file is actually uh, um, in, uh, verified against the script analyzer. So this is the function file, and we just do a basic info script analyzer to it. So uh, that takes some time. So if I'm just working on one very specific uh, unit test, I don't really want to run all of this. So let's go to the unit test, and I will try to maybe only run this one because that's the one I'm working on. That's a very common scenario. So I'm going to keep that one, and I want to run only on test is in class to test the PS one. So I can come here and I want to uh, use this variable and I want to use, well, actually get localized data. That's a good example. I already had it. So if I run this, let me check if, I'm glad I checked. Oh, it needs to be valid YAML. So if I run the test, automatically you should see, so you we will see from the task, Let's wait for it to load the task. So from the task, you can see test scripts now is this. So it will only run this, but you can also have, it's an array, so you can have different things. And then it should start, and then it will run only this file, which is localized data, which is this test. So it will run all of those which will be much faster. So if I'm only working on this one and I don't want to run everything, I can run this. And then when I'm done, I remove that one. So I'm just going to comment that one out. I haven't saved yet. I will do in a second. I just want to show you this. But then you comment it out, save the file. And then when it's saved, you run again, and this will run the full shit. So uh, by doing this, this is exactly the same code which is run on the CI tool. So you can very easily run something on your machine while you're developing it and then run the same thing to build it. So 
So it's much easier. You don't have any missing steps and you know exactly what's happening. And if you troubleshoot, you can much easier, it's much easier to troubleshoot exactly what's going on. So you can see it's running only the get localized data test. And it's run only the tests that have been configured in this uh, in these files. Which is pretty simple. There we are. So because we're running the full tests only with one file, obviously the um, the uh, code coverage is actually not going to match because we're only doing one file out of all the files, and we have a code coverage of less than ten percent of the module. But that's okay. We expected it as long as the test pass. So why is it doing code coverage when I just said test? It's because there's also many subtasks into my test task. So as you can see, you have invoke pest test is uh, one of the tasks. So I could actually be even more specific. Let me stop this. So instead of running build, I could do the task invoke pest test, which is the name of the task. And I can't remember if there's an S or not. Let's try. It's going to tell me otherwise. My computer is a bit slow. Apologies for that. Ah, you see, that was not the right name. So if you have an in doubt, actually, you can list the task by just doing this. Which is uh, it just ending off the task to invoke build, and that's one of the features of invoke build. So it will load everything, and you can see build model, uh, and you will say pesta if got coverage, publish, and everything. And you also have uh, you can see the set task in there, and well, the the workflow, the one I call the workflow. So pesta test. Stop on fail is one of them, and they invoke pester. That's the one I want. Invoke pester test. There's an S. There we go. So I will run my pester test task, and still with my parameter, I still haven't saved. I'm waiting for it to load. I've got a fly in there somewhere. Unbelievable. So you can see test script still having this specific file. I'm not going to save for the next run, but at least it will only run this uh, this task. I'm not, not going to run the code coverage uh, verification. <coughs> I don't know why, but I believe the code coverage has really sl uh, been slowing down uh, in Pesta recently. And I think I'm not the only one finding this. Do, do, do. And my computer is also a bit slow. It's got quite a few things up. As you can see, the camera moving. That's because I try. I'm trying the Logitech uh, follow my face, and I'm not sure it's doing a great job right now. Come on, computer, faster. All right. In the meantime, I'll just switch back to the slide. <coughs> and I've shown you, um, so the build workflow, and now it creates the artifacts. And then, oh, I forgot to show you something. Um, so when you run the tests, it actually also stored the test results in files. So because I'm not running it, I've, I haven't run uh, the full test suites, but otherwise the test results would be in there. But every time it cleans them up, uh, then it won't create them again. So this is invoke pester that has been run, and then it tells you everything that hasn't been covered by a test, but it won't uh, fail the build by the assertion because we excluded that task. So um, we're testing, I should know how to test the build module, and then uh, looking at the test results. Um, invoke pester, oh yeah, in custom runs. Custom runs is what I did where you can change, obviously, um, you can change um, the configuration in there. But if you just want uh, from your test, you can definitely do this. 
especially VS Code's got some nice features. So as an example, if I'm on this file and just want to run this test, you see VS Code gives me this uh, option to run the test. I can just do this. Actually, it will fail on this one. It should fail on this one, yes. It should fail on this one because it ran into, uh, in the PowerShell integrated, uh, yeah, my computer is really slow as you can tell. Um, so it actually fails and this is for the reason I told you earlier. Let's, so if, so this is running in a different session than the one I was playing with because that's the integrated terminal. When I click in there, it will run into the integrated terminal. Uh, which is not the one I was using before. So because your environment variables are not set, so if I run, uh, sorry, NetOp, as I said earlier, this will reset, your, uh, will, this will uh, change your environment variable, the PS module path. And now you will be able to find the modules it needs, like Pesta or actually the, the one you built. So now that I run this, I can do this again, just run the test. I know the test should run. As you can see, it know it is able to load uh, the module and then run the test against this module. And now it works. So making sure you go through. But that means you can still just run this. You can run specific tests if you've got big test files. All right. Back to this. <clears throat> so that's custom run. Oh yeah, and you can pack. Pack will just, uh, so let me get back to another one maybe. I can go there. Unpack is just another task. Sorry, task. So that one will be a bit slow if my computer is slow. So it cleans and rebuild the module because that's what the workflow is defined to do. And then you see in the output, it's been doing this, but no, it will also do. It creates the change logs. I will get into that a task in a bit. It packages the modules new PKG. So it's making sure that um, first of all, it will pack. It will also pack the uh, dependencies just in case you need them. Let's say to upload into your private gallery if you want to. Um, but um, it will also create the um, the the NuGet package for this module that you've just built. So on this case, oh, that's why it's going to take some time because uh, this is one of the dependency. I can show you in my source module manifest. And then you have um, required modules. You've got PS Script Analyzer, and I've got a specific version to be the minimum, uh, which is, I believe, today is the latest, or it was a few days ago. So that's why it takes some time. This is a module which is quite big. The reason it, it needs to pack those is because it's using publish module into a repository, which is just a local. Um, as you can see here, it's just a local repository. So here we go. Actually, it's done it now. Um, I just published that to this uh, to a local repository, which is uh, into my output module. And I've got my PS Script Analyzer, which is the dependency uh, new peg. And I've got my DSC resource analyzer roles uh, new peg. And you can see the version is actually the very specific version that has been built. So not looking at the source, if I'm looking at the PSD one here, you see the version 020 and if you go to the PS data fields you've got the pre-release which is pixel one so that's the one that has been created back to the slide we've seen pack as well all right let's go so uh, as you've seen, we can do all the features independently. And there's, a, there's another one that uh, I'm not running. It's the publish one, and I'm not running for obvious reasons. I don't really want to publish. There's actually a way to, uh, if I don't set the um, GitHub uh, personal access token, and if I don't set my NuGet gallery environment variable with uh, the API key, uh, then it won't do anything anyway. 
But uh, the idea is you can run in the same way you run the task publish. So Azure Pipeline's uh, CI system. So by default, this module is uh, coming with a working template, if you want. And what it does is you build once, the same as you've seen. So um, build up PS1, the dash task, um, and the name of the task is uh, build. And you resolve the dependencies, of the, the dependencies at the same time. And it builds it once. And then there's a different stage, which is actually running the tests in four uh, runtime OS com configuration. So different platforms, if you want. It runs on Windows PowerShell, on a Windows Core, um, Windows, uh, uh, no, sorry, PowerShell on Windows, but PowerShell 6.3, 6.2.3, I think, on um, on a Windows Core as well. And then on Linux with Windows Core, uh, with PowerShell Core, and then Mac with PowerShell Core as well. Oh yeah, a note on case sensitivity. The main issue I see when I or I've seen uh, someone else module, the main problem running um, between Linux, WSL, or Windows PowerShell is case sensitivity. Because the file system on Linux, and I'm not talking about WSL, but the file system on Linux is case sensitive. When you do say a test path, if there's one mistake in and in the um, in the path, it will return false. And many people don't really care about that when they write a module on Windows. But as soon as you want to use the same on a Linux file system, uh, that usually screws things up. But when you do a get item, uh, as an example, because it looks at a path, it might it's it's um it doesn't care that much about the because PowerShell is taking over. If you want, it's not the file system anymore. It's PowerShell trying to find the file. Then PowerShell says, well, I can look for the same file without uh, if you specify it without uh, being case sensitive. So um, be very careful about case sensitivity. Uh, nine times out of ten, that's going to be your problem. At least that's for me. So the samples pipeline. Oh yeah, I can show you. Uh, I can show you what it looks like uh, in Azure DevOps. So let me bring a new window. Come here. And then I'll go uh, sampler. <coughs> and we'll look at one of the latest. So sampler is actually the module, but the mo module use itself if you want for for all the principles. So it's a module using itself for building. Um, and you can see there's three stages and, and I will get into more details. I will start by, okay, let's let's look at the latest one, which is a, a proper release. Well, it's a preview release actually. Let's expand. So build out to find the first stage is to build the module. The second one is to test the module on Linux, on Windows Core, um, on the Windows PowerShell Core, and then on Windows Windows PowerShell, and then Mac OS PowerShell Core. And then if all of those passes, then it's fine, you can deploy. But this only happens, um, it starts deploying only on a merge to master. So that has to be when it runs on master, it has to be when it runs on the master, uh, when it's a PR, a pull request, which is merged to master. So if we go uh, back to the list of the history, and I show you another one, that one is a good example. This is when the PR runs. Someone raises a PR, you want to run, but you don't want to deploy even if it's successful. You want to make sure all the test passes, and then you say, okay, that's fine. Then you start merging into your master branch, and it's when you run, when you have merged it into the master branch that the next um, a deployment while well, the main, the next run of the CI tool will kick in. So the PR runs everything but never deploys. <coughs> and if you have a failure like this one, you can see this one failed and the question is, oh, why did it fail? Then you can look at the error and it says, well, that was an error because one of the tests didn't pass. And the problem is here, you need to uh, scroll up, but then there you go. There was an issue with the changelog format compliant with keep a changelog format. I'll get into more details maybe another time, but keep a changelog format. But the idea is uh, this failed, so the build failed. 
And this is how you can find out. All right. So that shows very quickly the pipeline. Oh, I can show you the other one. Well, you've seen you've seen one this is the same with the DSC resource analyzer rules. Uh, I will very, show you very quickly, which is DSC resource analyzer rules. Very similar principles. You see, I've struggled a bit at the beginning and maybe I will document that one. It was an issue with uh, a module, one of the dependency I'm using on the specific cases I was running in. So the main reason is because uh, the build runs on Linux and uh, it's a bit of a case sensitive issue, but it's also another issue. So um, same principle and at the moment, this has not been released yet because I didn't want to release it, but uh, I will probably record next time I release so you see how the releases work. So everything being released, I will show on the PowerShell gallery and then I will go for the package sampler. It by default it will always deploy. It will always deploy a pre-release. Unless you re if you really want to release uh, the ID when you manage artifacts, uh, immutable version artifacts, and you will have a preview and then another preview and then another preview and maybe you will test that la latest preview and if you're happy with it, you're going to say, okay, that's a good preview. Let's make it um, a normal release. So you will git tag your repository, push it, and then the build pipeline will see, oh, you pushed a new tag on this master branch. I am going to release it. So if you look at the latest release, uh, so that's the latest preview, but the latest release is 96.0. That is because I did git tag v0.96.0 uh, at that point and then they just released it for me so know that this has been done um, I will show you as well the github for sampler and then it releases it in the partial gallery but also it releases into the github release you can see there's 50 release here that's quite a bit because I the benefits of having it um, um, iteration is you can uh, iterate very very quickly because it's very easy to just do it so here we go you see this is the um so so this is this is the latest pre-release and you can see this is the latest release i was talking about and all of them are tags if you if you look at tag here all of them are tags and these are all the tags. So when I just push that tag, that automatically creates a pre-release. And then I'm using Git version, which I will get into more details later. But Git version allows you to not manage, um, not change the versions at all. And it will automatically calculate them based on the tags and the different things you're doing. Um, I will get into more details. That's probably worth one session entirely on this. Uh, let's get back to the slides. Pretty much done here. Uh, so we've shown how to get started. Oh yeah, no, next time I'm going to show you uh, how to get started. Actually, I might try just now. And um, you can just download the template and then create a new um, a new module based on that template. So um, our sample files here, yeah, okay, I'm going to show you that. Uh, because the template comes with sample files and then uh, you can also run your template using plaster on top of your existing repository and then it will tell you if uh, two files don't match and then if you want to replace it you can until you create a backup of that old file so then you're not losing anything even if it anyway it would be in git repository right so that should not be an issue but you can still have the op the backup file and uh, the virtual environment approach so this is uh, this is the idea where um, you if you have even 50 repositories using this model you're not going to pollute your uh, user environment between two runs because you're not installing any module. You're only um, polluting if you want your current PowerShell session or, and you're only saving this locally on your disk for each repository, which may seem cumbersome, but at the same time that ensure that you, it can run on your machine, it can run on the CI system, or it can run on anyone's machine. So um, quickly, 
the plaster template. Um, so, oh, actually, I'm not going to use that one. Do I have? All right, let me just bring up Conemu here. Uh, the difference is I'm not on PS Core 6, but it doesn't matter. So in this case, I'd, I will make this bigger. There we go. So I first want to install module sampler forge just in case. And then I, I'm not admin on this machine, so I just want to on my scope to be my current user. Right. And pass through. It should be 096, as we've seen. That's the latest pro release, and I'm not passing out of pro release. I just, it doesn't matter. You could get the latest pro release one, but uh, at the moment, I will only show you with this one, with the release. Do, 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 do. It's installing and zipping, and I should have it now. The pass through will return me, and we, here we are. So, um, this is the dependency, as I say, plaster. And then because maybe, because maybe I didn't have plaster installed as well. And this is the version I was expecting of sampler. So now that I have sampler, um, actually I can actually do, uh, that's a function from plaster. So get plaster template. That's how plaster works. And I, I need to include install modules because I will look at the modules I have installed, not just these are the two built in um, plaster and which I believe I used as well in uh, VS Code. But then it's going through all my modules and try to find one which is exposed by a module. So hopefully, so that's going through all my modules, but hopefully here we are. We've got the sampler module template here, and then it gives you something very important, which is the template path. So in my case, I will just invoke plaster template path here and I tell it where I want to run. So um, destination path would be where I put, do I have a dev? Okay, I'll put in my dev environment here. And then uh, he, this is the plaster interface and these are the uh, questions of the parameters I ask plaster to ask the user. So what do you want to do? So uh, you can go and select specific features but in this case, I just want to go the simplest possible way, and I want a complete module sample. Um, author's name. No, my name is Gail. And then the name of, oh, I show something. So the name of the module I want, um, the module I want will be my new module. And description. Uh, it just re remembers the latest things you run, uh, which uh, it's kind of unwanted, but never mind. Ignite is still going, but this is done. So testing, module version, I don't really care. This is managed for me using Git version. And the module's new name. Okay, so where do you want the source to be? So uh, there's different practices going on. Some people call it SRC, some people call it source, and some people call it uh, the name of the module itself. Um, I everything's supported uh, more or less there's a tiny issue when it's not the name of the module when you run on uh, on Linux but there's a there's a workaround until I actually have time to fix module builder for, for this um, but I will just use the modules name so that the shortcut is T and then that creates all the files and it actually also includes some sample files so if I now go to um, my C dev my new model and then these are my files. So I open VS Code. And I've got pretty much all the files I need. And this is the source file because I asked it to be the same name. And I've got one private, one public function. And also I've got the test for them. And this is also the classes. So it's got pretty much everything I wanted. So there's no enums and I don't really need them. So I don't need those, so I'm going to delete it. I don't need the classes in this case, so I'm going to delete them. And uh, I don't need the classes, so I'm going to remove also the test for the classes. Yes. 
but um, I've got a module so what do I do from there so I also have so I also have my build ps1 script and I can start with my entry point I'll do a no up first just to remind you oh I forgot something so this is what happens when you didn't uh, you start this, but you didn't uh, resolve the dependencies. Uh, it tells you, well, uh, you try to run the task, but you're missing this invoke build comment. And this is because you need to resolve the dependency first. So by running the dependencies, I will automatically pull the basic default uh, required modules I want here. So invoke build is one of them, PS Script Analyzer, Pesta, Plaster, and so on. Those are needed to build your module using this uh, thing. So it will take some time. Let me go back here. And then if you look at the output folder. Yeah, I know I haven't updated that yet. And required modules, you can see it's actually starting PowerShell YAML and then it will keep going. So under the hood, this is using psdepend at the moment. Um, and this is the format of psdepend. Where is it again? Oh yeah, that's the one. So this is the format of PSD pen, so you can have uh, specific options. Mm, that's interesting, but that's good. That was 55 minutes. So still running, PS script analyzer. This is, this is a big module actually, because it's got a lot of uh, assets going with it. Sampler, plaster is the dependency, configuration is a dependency for module builder. I need change log management coming right up. And then it will do a no up. And nearly finished. Change log management, and I think I'm done. Am I? Oh, Pesta, where's Pesta? Yeah, the problem is the, yeah. So if you already have installed in your module, no, I don't want to say too much. All right, so the, the no up is there. So uh, as you can see, that's fine. Uh, it didn't do anything, but this is what I expected. But then your new module, you haven't written anything yet. You just removed a couple of folders, done a resolve dependency, but then you want to make sure, well, what exists there is actually valid. So I want the task test to run. Well, actually I need to build first and then test. So I will build my module. And if you see in the output folder, the module you created, which is my new module, is being built. You see the version is correct. Copy the folder and put the two functions I was, uh, I, that come along, which is just simple, simple and very basic functions that you will replace very soon. But at least you are able to build this module by default. And then you will run the past the test going with those because you are not in Git yet, the changelog has been, uh, the, the changelog test um, has been skipped. It's coming from the QA one here, but then you run um, making sure that the help is correct and the P script analyzer is correct for uh, the functions you have, which is only the two functions so far. But that means you started deploying this module with this template. You can straight away making sure like everything's compliant to your standard, or you can exclude it and um, editing the YAML file. And then you can just start uh, making changes, making sure it works, creating the test for them, and then keep going and iterating for this and then release and push as you go along. That means you start with high quality and you stick with high quality, which is much easier than starting with low quality and trying to catch up later. So you can see the code coverage is one person and the build started and I've written nothing. So when you've done this, the first thing you would do is probably a git in it. Oops. So making sure this is a repository now 
and then from there you would probably uh, add uh, an origin or a, a remote and then you could origin and then that would be on github something so when you create the repo on github that's how you would do it but that means you started by just using a plaster template to have this uh, the benefit all of this and all the features you've seen so far so that was it for the plaster template um my name is Cal, and then if you need any help let me know um and if you want to see more of those uh, let me know thank you bye, -bye.